Hey everybody on Patreon, thanks so much for tuning in to this little interview with Sam and for partnering with me to provide great juggling content to the juggling community. Sam's agreed to come on and talk a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how social media or the internet has impacted juggling or ways that it's influencing or changing the culture. Um, so Sam, what are your thoughts on that? I think that the way uh, social media is coming together now is is interesting because so much about juggling historically, like performing, was about like what you could do in your show that was impressive, or you know, mm. doing this so you could perform something that was original. But now it's about just like getting likes. You know, like how do you how do you get the most views on a video and why? Because for things like um, like YouTube, it sort of makes sense. You want people to watch your videos because you can get paid ad revenue. But for stuff like Instagram, it really is just kind of a vanity thing. Like it's mm. it, at some point, if you have enough followers, it matters mm -hmm. to have a lot of followers. I think like you know, like you can get other opportunities mm -hmm. from it. But most of the time, what I've seen is it just seems like it's more of just a weird competition. Mm. Um, and like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I'm not not trying to put it down or anything like that. But it seems like you see a video on on Instagram or you see a video on Facebook or something from a juggler, and it's more about like, hey, look at this thing that I did once. Whereas like, I have very old views, I think, on juggling where I go like, all right, well, I'm not going to make a video of something until I can do it every time because I want it to be the same as a performance. Mm -hmm. So if it's something that's in a video, I want it to be something that I can hit consistently like I don't want to have to be filming over and over again for days and days and days but I think that uh, what happens with you know you get like an Instagram video is you get like kind of famous you go like oh man I did this crazy thing once and you could do that for art's sake you know make it burn it make it again make something new whatever but also it's like well you know you are just making videos so like I don't know it's it's kind of a it's kind of a weird new world for juggling I think because of that and it's not just juggling it's like this with any circus skill any art mm -hmm. um, you see people who are working on things and pushing levels but they're not pushing the levels as much as they're like incrementally raising the level but because they have a recording of them do it it's kind of the same as if they could do it every time you know I always thought yeah. that was really fascinating you can loop it yeah yeah exactly you could or you can edit it you could do whatever you want you know the the tension that you're you're talking about through different conversations I've had with jugglers. I think is it's a big one for people who uh, who juggle for a career, because it, um, it it kind of I don't know. I think traditionally, like that's like why else would you? I don't know. In a lot of ways, I think juggling's probably always been a hobby, but to juggle at the uh, at the level that a, someone who performs juggles at, I think was generally or traditionally reserved for that's definitely yeah it is kind of a that is kind of weird uh, now that you mention that like i mean you it's not even just about to me like you see hobbyists that have skill beyond performers like professional level performers you see people like you know you, you can see kids at a gym who can run seven balls for minutes and they don't perform at all like they can't get on stage or anything like that that's not why they do it so it's weird because, like, social media is like that, too. Like, there's people that are performing, but they're not really performers. Like, their performance is only for social media. Right. Like, that's it. And that's kind of strange. But it's, I don't know, it's fascinating, too. Like, maybe that's that's the next step. That's the new venue, you know? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that you said is that it's, uh, it's about vanity. And obviously that that is true. Um, but I can't help but think that it's more to do with uh or that 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 part of that vanity is less about competition and positioning yourself against other jugglers and more about like boosting your self-esteem yeah i i could i could agree with that i think and i mean i, I don't think it's all about vanity i think that like you know plenty of people are just like hey check out this cool thing you know Right. Like, I don't want it to sound like I'm, like, putting it down. Like, every person who has, you know, more than a thousand followers on Instagram is, you know, <laughs> but, like, yeah, I think I think that is true. It is kind of like a positive, a positive affirmation of your skills, you know? Like, you're like, oh, man, people must really like what I did, you know? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it's it's definitely fascinating. Um, just, just that that's kind of, like, 
that's only going to keep going, right? Like right. that's just that's just the beginning. Like stuff like Instagram and Snapchat and stuff are just starting. Mm-hmm. So, do you think that it's ultimately the do you think it's ultimately raising the bar um, for what a, a a decent like juggling skill is or a skill level? Maybe. Um, I think that there's this confusion that like the juggling skill and skill as a performer are kind of the same. Like people think about like. Anthony Gatto, right? Where they go, like, Anthony Gatto is such a good juggler. He was such a great performer. He'd run seven clubs for, like, 50 catches every night. But it wasn't that he'd run seven clubs that made him a good performer. It was that he knew how to present it really well. So I think that there's some really good jugglers, and there's also some really bad videos. And there's also some really good videos of really bad jugglers. And it's not that, like you need to be good or bad at either of these things. It's just that it's it kind of comes down to me as the same complaint that I've heard jugglers. Like, jugglers have told me stuff that they feel about street performing because they know that I street perform, and they say stuff like, well, you know, street performers, you just juggle, like, three things. I could do that. And it's like, well, there is a lot more to it than just juggling three things. But you get that same thing with video. And sometimes it's a little bit of a hypocrisy. Like, I've talked to people who, like, really big into making a video for Instagram, and they're like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And like, I found that I got, I did this thing and it was kind of dumb, but I got a lot of views. So I'm going to do some more things like that. And I go like, okay. They're like, but you're only going to juggle a little bit. I'm like, well, yeah, because the people don't have the attention span for it maybe, or maybe people don't care about juggling as much as you do. And they go like, well, why? I'm like, well, it's the same deal. I don't know. Which is one of them is real life and one of them's on your phone. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is it's one of those conversations that I it's it's like it's still happening. So it's like how do you talk about how this is impacting or like we have no idea what it's going to do to Yeah, I mean this is it's literally at the very beginning. Yeah. You know, it's like it's not even like like you can't really expect what's going to happen or how it's going to work out just because there's been nothing ever like this before. Like you've never, like even this right now, like we're just talking through the internet. Like you've never had anything like that before. So the idea that like we're going to know what the impact it's going to have on juggling is, yeah. it's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. What I think is weird, this is just like one thing I want to throw onto this, is that um, the people who see like videos of juggling and stuff on Instagram that like them that aren't jugglers, um, they don't necessarily care more about juggling or understand more of the skill involved with it afterwards. Like just from people that I've met, um, either at shows or on the streets or something, who like they see me juggling, like at the gym even, people are like, oh yeah, I see you juggling. Like there is a there's a guy who he was a huge fan of Josh Horton and we were in the basketball court or whatever. And Josh made a trick shot video where he juggled like three basketballs and he threw into the hoop and I was working on like seven balls. And the guy was like, Oh, that's crazy. Have you seen this guy? I was like, yeah, that's, that's my friend Josh. And he's like, Oh man, well he's only doing three. I'm like, well, I mean, you know, like it's like Josh does like tons of crazy stuff, you know, like he's, he's a great juggler. But people don't see that. Like, even though he's making the content, that's not what people see. They're not like, oh, well, he did the six ring trick on this video. They're like, oh, well, look at this. You know? yeah. yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, he could probably do seven, too. Uh... I'm pretty sure I've seen Josh juggle seven things. It's just pretty sure. Although I haven't seen seven basketballs. That is something I have not seen. I don't know about you. Yeah, he should step his game up. You're right. Yeah. If anybody's watching this, just message Josh right now. Sam said you need to step your game up. Seven basketballs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and make everyone into a basket. The the clap, it, <laughs> like actually, like yeah. like just leather baskets. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This one looks like Steve Mills. <laughs> uh, you, were you gonna say something else? I, I think I was saying something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's just that, like that, that, that classic criticism, right, from like your audiences or from random people. That and this pisses off jugglers, where they're like, 
yeah, that was great. But can you do plus one? You know, can you do plus two? <laughs> wow, you're doing seven. I could not even fathom how much time that took. But try nine. So like, yeah, Josh, you can do five basketballs. Do seven. But it's okay because I'm a juggler. I can say. <laughs> no, no, I think you're making fun of me right now. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um all right so uh let's see we're already at 10 minutes Whew. all right well i hope it's not um, too boring for everybody but hey that's okay we keep talking tell me i wanted to hear a little bit about tom wall okay what do you want to know oh man what do you want to hear i want to know i want to hear some dirt on tom you want to hear some dirt on Tom? Actually, there's actually not really dirt on tom. <laughs> tom seems like a really good dude so when i say dirt i mean something funny okay um i think a lot of those stories come down to times that i picked on tom <laughs> yeah. so me and tom um met because he was coming out to boulder when i first moved to colorado he was coming out to boulder with alan thompson they used to do a like they used to juggle together they had some great passing videos and stuff that they worked on alan thompson by the way is one of my favorite um technical jugglers like Love that guy's stuff. Um, I don't know if he's still working on anything, but you know, I don't even know if he'll ever hear this. But uh, Tom and Alan came out to Boulder, and I met them. And Tom bought the first set of juggling balls that I sold. Oh, cool. And he was working on this trick where he was getting them kind of behind his neck like this. It's like three ball trick. And he filmed a video of it, and he had a poster in this video. Behind him in this poster was a brontosaurus. So he named it the brontosaurus trick. Hmm. And I was like, oh, man, I love that trick. And he was like, oh, these balls actually make it really, like, a lot better. And I was like, cool. So I was, like, just, like, figuring out how to make them as best as I could. So I made him a few few sets of the starters. And he bought some from me because he's just a nice guy. Like, he wanted to support me. And I named them after that trick. That's actually where the name brontosaurus balls came from. So... Then uh, Tom and me both ended up applying to work at this YMCA summer camp up in the mountains of Colorado for the summer. This is like within that same couple weeks that we had first met. And they hired us to instruct juggling. They wanted us to be juggling instructors. So we ended up getting put into a cabin together. And then we, we were like, you know, we had this this one thing in common, but we also were both, you know, pretty relaxed and like to make jokes and stuff and pick on people a little bit and you know take things with a little bit of a little bit of jest so we became pretty good friends doing that and then we'd um so we'd watch kids and then sometimes that was awful and sometimes that was awesome and then on the weekends we would uh go practice juggling and then occasionally we would get really really drunk uh and then you know that was that was kind of where we became friends was just working at the summer camp but it's also weird because it was like a YMCA summer camp that we both did for a summer just because we could. And it wasn't like, it didn't really pay anything. It was just like us living in the mountains and hiking around together. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, you know, we bonded over juggling. And then, you know, from then on, we, you know, he moved to Boulder and we hung out a bunch. And it was kind of this like real cute story of how we became friends. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool to know that he's played this um, huge part in the name of your company. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> also, I wanted, I wondered uh, what what it's like to be a juggling instructor at a YMCA when you when you guys are drunk together. Um, well, we were never drunk at the camp, oh, okay. <laughs> so that is that is because that would be illegal, <laughs> and we would never ever break the laws <laughs> together. It would never happen. Just, uh, sounds no. like sounds like there's some dirt in there somewhere, but but uh, <laughs> so um. No, it was just it, it was fun because like we made friends with all these other people who were not jugglers, who had nothing to do with juggling, who had nothing to do with the community. In fact, they were more on the they were going to the YMCA camp to teach because they were Christians, like they were hardcore like religious people. And that was okay. Me and Tom were not. So we ended up just like kind of hanging out because this was like, oh well, we could we could bond over this and <laughs> You know, we're not, you know, we don't have a lot in common with a lot of other people, but we have stuff in common with most people and we'd kind of tell silly jokes and stuff. And yeah, that was, that was kind of how things went. Cool. So yeah, like, you know, we'd party on the weekends basically and 
you know, try to make the most of it. Yeah. Living in a camp and losing your mind, surrounded by children. <laughs> Teaching people how to juggle who didn't oh, want to learn. <laughs> that sounds horrible. Um, <laughs> I mean, it really doesn't sound great. Except for the mountain part. And being with, <laughs> with a friend. That sounds pretty cool. Um, Alright, so if you had to express your love for Tom Wall, what would you say? Well, this is just a video for all the people who are going to pay for the Patreon, right? So. Well, f for for now. Okay. <laughs> who knows well, what I'm just happen. saying, like, like, the chances of Tom seeing it right away are pretty low. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'd say... I was gonna, if I was going to put my love for Tom Wall into words, it would be that he is totally irreplaceable. And I have tried. Like, I have tried to replace him. And I thought that having one Matt Hall would equal out to having two Tom Walls. But really, you know, no matter how many walls you have, it just, he's, he's, he's the good one, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... Yeah, I don't know. He's one of my best friends. I'm really happy that he's in Cirque du Soleil and, and making the most of that and like pushing his career and stuff. Like, Me and him used to get together every weekend and or we'd get together multiple times a week and we'd go practice at the gym and then go out for like cheap hamburgers and argue over like, you know, well, I have five dollars in my bank account so I could buy two hamburgers and, you know, I have twenty dollars in my bank account. Like just flat broke you know, trying to do whatever we could to get a gig or to do anything and like working on routines and writing stuff and coming up with cool tricks and, you know, advice. And so, you know, he's, he's like definitely one of my best friends and he's definitely one of my biggest mentors. And to that, you know, I owe him kind of my whole career. So. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that's great. That about wraps it up. Um, All right. Sam's been awesome tonight hanging out with me, and I hope you guys enjoy this too. Thanks for supporting Patreon, me on Patreon. I don't care if you support Patreon. And uh, you should go buy some Brontosaurus balls. Yeah, that's a good idea too. Yep. Um, like me on Facebook and stuff. Yep. Just like me in real life, that's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweet. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Sean. See you guys later.